Hello, and welcome to the Other Art Fair Los Angeles Virtual Edition. My name is Nicole Garten, and I'm the fair director here. And I'm really excited to welcome you and give you a preview of what you can discover here. So I will share my screen, and hopefully you can follow along at home. So if you haven't registered already, the first thing you'll want to do is find this page and log in your information and this will grant you access to the fair. It's free to sign up and it's really easy. So from here, what you'll do then is you'll be able to click into the fair itself and start exploring. So this is what the fair environment looks like. As you can see, it is three dimensional. You can move and walk around and it feels a lot like being at our live event if you've never attended before. If you have, this may look slightly familiar. We're so excited to be partnering again with Saatchi Art and with Bombay Sapphire, who are presenting a series of curated collections, workshops, and interactive features. So be sure to check those out. There are three artist rooms, which you can see, and there are artists within each room who you'll be able to click on their artworks, interact with videos, and schedule a video talk with them if you'd like. You'll also be able to click to purchase any artworks you see within the fair. So before I dive in, I want to let you know that each room also has several features in addition to the exhibitors. So in room one, we have Fembit as well as the Museum of Crypto Art. So let's take a peek inside room one. So, here we are within room one. As I mentioned, you can navigate by clicking, arrowing forward, and you can also use this very handy tool here over on the side where you can pull up an overview of all the artists. So you can scroll for any particular artist you have in mind, and you can jump to their stand uh, directly. So as I mentioned, in this room, we have several very exciting artists, as well as the Museum of Crypto Art which you'll definitely want to check out. They have a lot of really interesting interactive artworks. And Fembit has AR artworks as well as video work. So very exciting. And I'm very happy for everyone to come check out room one. In addition, we also have many curated tours. So you can watch a tour with me of a few artists showing in this room. And you can also get a five minute fly through tour with our virtual editions fair director, Jess. And the Saatchi Art Curators are also giving tours throughout the week. So be sure to check our program for any of those guided tours. So returning to the entrance, I want to take you into room two. Within room two, as well as in all the other rooms, you'll also have a chance to discover Saatchi Art Curated Collections, as well as Bombay Sapphires, workshops and illustrator corners. So if you would like to have an artwork done personalized, you can submit a request and some of our illustrators will be creating artworks just for you. So be sure to head to the Bombay booth for that. So Bombay is at the end of the aisle and between here and there, there are so many really exciting artists. So just as in Ruman, you can pull up the list of artists here and jump to any that suit your fancy or you can explore on your own. So some highlights in this room in terms of features are we have the Liberated Arts Collection, Collective, sorry, we have the Liberated Arts Collective, which is showing a selection of works by a variety of artists. And we're really happy to be working with them. And our guest artist, Brandon Boyd, is also showing in room two. So be sure to check him out. Okay, heading back to the entrance again, let's jump to room three. In addition to Brandon Boyd and Liberated Arts Collective, we also have a very special project stand with Society6 where we are co-presenting a collection of works by Amber Vittoria and proceeds from the sale of those works will go to Lauren Halsey's Summer Everything Community Center. So we're really excited about that collaboration. 
So don't miss room two, this is a must see. Last but not least in room three, we have another slate of all-star artists. And as I mentioned, these artists have all been handpicked by a panel of experts. So you're sure to discover really exciting artists. They hail from all around the world and the majority of them are also from the Los Angeles region. So in room three, we have a really exciting interactive feature with an artist called Eva Kremers. You can create your own character that is really fun and interactive and digital. And we also have an exciting program of short films and dance programming with Marquee TV. So you'll be able to find their stand in room three as well. And last but not least, we also have a very special collaboration with the Wall Street Journal Plus who have put together a really exciting collection of artworks. So I highly encourage you to check out room three. So that's a very quick overview of the fair. Um, but that's not all. We have so many exciting features for you to discover and interact with. So I'm taking us back to this landing page where below here, you'll, able, you'll be able to see the artist list. We can click on any of the artists. The fair program will give you a chance to see what's on each day. So this includes talks, tours, video programming. And then this section, chat with an artist, this allows you to schedule a video chat with any artist for 10 minutes. I also want to highlight that each of our artists has taken the time to pre-record a brief video of themselves, which we've edited. So you can meet all of them, learn a bit about their work in their own words by clicking on the Feed the Others. Each of the videos is also positioned within each artist's stand. So you can click on that when you're viewing their artworks. And then other projects here is where we've rounded up all the really special projects we've done with artists. So this is everything from a playlist curated by the Chuita Vinyl Club to poetry readings, to interactive workshops, zine making, fashion design, all kinds of fun things in here. So don't miss other projects. Now we've had a quick look around the fair. I want to take a moment to introduce you to two artists we're so excited about. We have just named our new Futures Award winners. Jessica Carranza and Ricardo Colbion. I will be chatting with them and I hope you'll tune in. Okay. Hi. Hi. Welcome. <laughs> you. I love your pink wall. That's fun. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so welcome to the fair. This is your first time showing at the fair. And of course, we're so pleased to have you as one of our new futures artists. Um, so I wanted to start by asking you, can you tell us just a bit about your background and your journey to becoming the artist that you are and sort of how you got started? Uh, uh, so I'm from Los Angeles, born and raised. Um, I actually studied architecture and business in school, but uh, in a way it kind of told me like what I didn't want to do. And it kind of drove me back to art because I was like, oh, that's actually what I really interested in doing. Um, and then during the pandemic is when I, you know, really like buckled down and focused on art because like, you know, finally I had the time to do it that I never had before. Um, and so that's when I really started painting a lot. And then I started my own little business doing these custom jackets. And yeah, that's where I am today. So exciting. Yeah, this is great. Um, so I know one of the unique features of your work is that you're using acrylic to paint on denim. And it's not just, you know, any denim. They're actually jackets that people wear and so I'm wondering if you're working with your clients in this business of yours is it a very collaborative process or you know how do you find that each project kind of evolves and how much interaction is there between you and the eventual owner um yeah so it is pretty collaborative usually the client will come to me with like a general idea like oh I want you know a son or something like just like a general idea of what they want incorporated and then I kind of just, you know, I take it all in, I sit on it for a few minutes, or in a few minutes, a few days, and uh, I'll like sketch up a few things. Um, and then I'll send it off to the client. And uh, I've been pretty lucky to work with people who are really easygoing. And they're like, oh, that looks great. And they like give me a lot of creative freedom. Um, occasionally, I'll have clients who be like, oh, can you incorporate like uh, this specific color scheme? Or like, I really want like a white butterfly in there, or, like things like that. So it's uh, pretty back and forth. 
but uh, in general, they, my clients tend to give me a lot of creative freedom, which I like really, really love. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, there's definitely in the art world, it's tricky when you want your own creative expression, but you're also like, well, what are people interested in? So it's definitely yeah. dialogue back and forth. Um, as an LA native, which is so fun, we do exist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Your hometown pride really comes across in your work as well. And I wondered if you could walk us through some of these works. I'm gonna back up a bit, but there's there's so many things kind of um, woven in throughout these works. And I wondered do you, which one should I click on? And you can kind of talk us through different elements. Um, yeah, so if you go to the one on the bottom right. This one? That one. Uh, yeah, I incorporated like the LA hands because it's like, you know, major LA pride. Um, also, I feel like uh, LA culture has a lot of roots in like Chicano Mexican culture. So like, that's also really important for me. So I incorporated like the like little uh, calaveras at the bottom, you know, stuff like that. Um, I have a few other pieces with like um, palm trees and like sun and like water elements for the beach. Um, I don't know, all things that just really remind me of home. Mm. Uh, <laughs> yeah, these yeah. are great. Um, and can you walk us through what else is going on in this one? Uh, that one, so my client was actually really like open-ended with that one. She just said, oh, I like, you know, like nature and like animals and stuff. Um, so I have a really like, I have, I like snakes a lot. I actually have uh, snake tattoos. <laughs> But um, I don't know, so I, I kind of thought of like a desert scape, which is also the other side of Los Angeles in a way, you know, because we are in a big desert basically. Um, yeah, and I just really like the bright colors and all that. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, and also I wanted to ask you about your use of digital tools because in addition to these works that you're doing with uh, acrylic, you're also working mm -hmm. um, in this other medium. So. How do those tools help you and do they sort of incorporate into your works here or how are you working with the digital? Is this uh, definitely. Um, so I would say my iPad is probably like the best purchase I've ever made. It's helped me so much in my art, especially because like a lot of my pieces incorporate symmetry. It's really easy for me to, you know, flip an image and like duplicate it and all that. And it's really great when I'm like making the designs for the jackets because I can you know, resize things and see like different placements of where things would look and look at them side by side and what different color combinations would work for me. So it like really helps me flesh out the design before I commit to it on the jacket. Um, but yeah, I've also been exploring like just like straight up digital work. So as you can see in this one. <laughs> yeah, this is fantastic. And I wanna have people get a chance to see this other work as well. This one is interesting because you're incorporating a lot of text too. Can you talk a bit about this one? Um, yeah, so that this was also initially started out as a sketch for a client and I was starting out as a sketch, but I was like, oh, this would be really cool with a full blown artwork. Um, so she wanted a space, mountains and the beach like incorporated into it. So I kind of predominantly went with an outer space theme, I guess. And I really liked the alien aspect and then the mountains like on the top and then the little um the the palm tree <laughs> tattoo on the neck and then uh the client who was for works for um SpaceX I think is it SpaceX yeah um so their slogan is onward and upward so I just thought it was like a good filler for the space <laughs> yeah I love yeah. that it's it's such a commentary too on the history of Southern California with like NASA and JPL and now SpaceX and everything that's going on. Um, yeah, definitely. Mountains and the sea. It, it couldn't be more quintessentially LA, but you definitely put your own stamp on it. So exciting. Well, I want to back up again here and give people an overall look of the stand, but I guess in closing, um, can you tell us this? You're just at the start of your career. This is just like, day one of what I'm sure will yeah. be an exciting future. So where are you hoping to be a year from now? What new projects or avenues are you exploring? Um, I think I wanna continue with the jackets because I really like the idea of wearable art. I think it's kind of a little different. Um, I don't know, it's kind of cliche, you know, they say like, oh, if you do what you love, you'll never work a day in your life. So like, that's really my like end goal where I wanna be is just full-time artist, like painting all day, every day. Um, I'm hoping, you know, 
that I'll make an actual career out of it and be able to support myself. So that's the dream. <laughs> awesome. Well, we're happy to help launch you and hopefully, um, you know, people today will take notice and they'll come check out your booth and I'm sure they'll love what they see. So thank you so much, Jessica. This is great. Thank you. Okay, now I'm going to navigate to Ricardo. Okay. Uh, if you want to join and turn on your video, Ricardo. <laughs> okay. Oh, there you are. Okay, I've backed up a bit. Right. Yeah, full, full sense. Hi. Thank you so much for joining. This is right. exciting. Congratulations. We're so happy to have you as our new teachers award winner. Um, so I guess to get started, do you want to just introduce yourself and kind of let people know a bit about you, your background, and sort of how you came to be an artist? All right, sure. Um, my name is uh, Ricardo Cobian. I'm 24 years old. Um, I was born in Fresno, California. I, uh, I've been painting since, uh, since about like middle school. I started drawing very early on. Like I, I come from, uh, uh, my brother was an artist in a way, like a street, street artist. And my grandfather, he, he was like early on, like uh, did a lot of portraits in Mexico and, um, so I had I had a, a good influence like artistic wise, and uh, but just uh, my my main interest as a child was always painting and uh, and just uh, the first artist I ever seen as a child was this this guy, wonderful artist named uh, Simone Silva, uh, very un 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 uh, unrecognized like he's 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 very um, uh, how do you say very uh, people don't really he's unknown but. He's very, uh, very known where I'm from. He, he uh, mostly paints like Alcatraz leaves and plants and sort of like Diego Rivera style. Mm -hmm. And really influenced like a lot of the kids like in the Central Valley because we grew up in a very agricultural like farming community. Like we all, all most of our other families are mig migrant farm working families, which we, re we, re we uh, relocate from town to town, uh, you know, season to season. And so um, he implemented a lot of uh, agriculture in his, in his paintings and he would come talk to the students and, and he was really cool. And, and so I sort of got that influence from him and he was an oil painter from, from day one. And so I always liked the vivid colors and my mom always had uh, Alcatrazes all over the house and stuff. But um, yeah, I've been painting as a kid. Um, you know, I, I unfortunately I grew up in a, in a very small town, though we didn't really have a lot of resources, no real art program or or no no nothing, and so I, I was tending to get into a lot of trouble. And uh, I uh, eventually came out here uh, due to like hardships and, and my family having to relocate back to Mexico. I came out here to LA while I was eighteen and uh, just started all over and. Uh, uh, I'm not going to lie, I completely forgot about art uh, when I stepped foot to LA because uh, my first instinct was about uh, helping out my family and um, just having the roof over my head, trying to uh, get myself in a better position, you know, and um, and just work. And so I was working, you know, dead end jobs, dishwasher, landscaping, whatever it could be, you know, and, uh, and so uh, God has put me through a lot of ups and downs and uh, uh, I want to say about three years ago or two and a half years ago, he blessed me. He put me in a, in a homeless shelter in Burbank, California. And uh, I, I, I went in there and um, everything aligned. Like um, I, I saw a beautiful oil painting of, uh, of a homeless person at, at I Hope of the Valley. It's a homeless shelter in Van Nuys. And I came in contact with the director right there and um, he helped me out. Uh, coming in contact with uh, local art galleries out there in the Valley. And um, I started helping them out, you know, volunteering time. I wasn't really like 
uh, trying to throw on my artwork at the time because I was at a Jewish um, <clears throat> gallery. And so I was helping them out with whatever they need. And so um, uh, everything aligned, like, I don't know, it was just a timing thing. And uh, and I, I've been painting seriously. Like I, I dove back into it like two years ago since when God put me in that homeless shelter, it got my mind right. I, I dove in and I, I haven't stopped since. And, and I'm, not, I'm not turning back. Wow. What a, a story you have. And I'm, I'm so glad that you've been able to find your feet and get situated. And, you know, we're so happy to be able to give you this platform so that more and more people will be able to discover your work and hopefully, you know, momentum will continue. So, man, I, uh, I really admire your, your, uh, thank your you. everything you've been through. Um, I wanted to comment too on, you know, your works. Let me zoom in here a bit. You combine so beautifully a mix of abstract things, but also sort of figurative things. So there's elements that look like faces or hands or eyeballs, but you also have some abstraction going on as well. So I wanted to see if you could talk to us a bit about, you know, what is inspiring you what is it that you're hoping to portray in your artwork um i really love disfiguring the the human uh body and the, the human face like I, I like extending like you know going past boundaries like as you can see in in, in my in my paintings like like right like that right there like i try to do a, a, a ear and a face together you know and and i just let my mind explore like i really love like like um like alien stuff you know and, and thinking about like other art uh other life forms and and how they may be developed you know like physically and so i i love extending like just the physical limitations that that you know us humans have of like oh the ear has to be right there or the eye could only be this big or this and that you know i, I like i like going crazy like you know, that's just my, 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 my mentality, just, just, just everywhere. There's no limits. You don't have to follow rules necessarily of, you know, this is how it is in real life, but you can explore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause there, there is no, like, just because God made us with two eyes and two ears doesn't mean that, that in, in some other galaxy or in some, uh, some other planet, you know, that there's other life forms, you know, that have three eyes and three ears, you know, and, and, and um, you know, might might be saying the same thing about us. Like, I don't know. I just like extending, like just going past my my even my own my own thinking. Just you know, because that's what it is. Like, I, I learned a lot when I was in uh, volunteering with the uh, at, at the Jewish gallery. I was um, they they gave me some insight on on, on just letting loose and just um, not having any rules. You know, they. They taught me on how to how to paint with my left and how to draw them with my left hand, you know, and get used to just seeing ugliness and and making you know fixing that ugliness with with just practice and practice, and so that that's sort of what I like to do, you know. I just there's no rules, you know, there's, and that's that's not that's that's what I love about art. Yeah, you let your imagination run wild, and kind of there's a play in terms of you know, what's possible and what you can create and imagine, you know, on your own. I also love your use of color. They're so vibrant and it really, especially the greens mixed with the bright reds and oranges and pinks, it reminds me a lot of, you know, botanicals and sort of tropical plant life. So where do you find your inspiration for your colors? Um... Well, I I love ever since I was a kid. Like my when they would ask me what my favorite color was, I'd always say the rainbow. Mm -hmm. Like I love that's I, I just I'd always thought that was a color, you know, just like red, blue, it's the rainbow. You know, it's all the colors in one. And so, uh, I, that's what I like. Uh, I, I like doing like on my palette. I like going crazy, you know, just random colors. You know, mix them up make make new creations you know that's that's what it is just experimenting and and uh and vibrancy and and i love bright colors like i've always i've always always loved like just weird bright colors 
I, I love them too. They're really fun. And I think they definitely draw people in. They're eye catching, but then you have a real canny mix of colors. So you've got the complementary colors, but then you've injected, you know, some more neon tones. So I love them. Um, I wondered too, if you could tell us, you know, when people see your work, what are you hoping that they walk away with or they feel when they see your work? Um, when they see my work, I, I, I would love uh, for them just to feel inspiration and just uh, some sort of motivation and, and just really feel that, um, you know, just grab some sort of uh, some sort of just uh, story or, or just interpretation of how, they, the, how, the, how the painting may look to them because um, like in this series right here, I, I like to think of it like as sort of my my blue phase, you know, where I'm I'm coming out of the the homeless shelter and, and it's sort of what I had to endure and go through in there and, and and before that, like you know, it's it's a it's a blue phase, you know, where I'm 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 coming and like art has really just allowed me to meet you know beautiful people inside and out that have helped me you know and grow tremendously, and so um. I just, I just, I just kind of spread nothing but positivity and, and inspiration, you know? Yeah, I think you really nailed it. These works are just pure joy and they're so positive and, you know, really hopeful. And I think that absolutely comes across. Speaking of hopeful and the future, where do you hope to be a year from now? What sort of works or projects do you want to be working on? Well, in a year from now, I'm definitely going to be working on some big, big canvases. I, I, want, I want to be working on big 60 inch, 70 inch canvases, you know, well gallery wrapped, you know, expensive, you know, I, I want to get up to there because I definitely have the, the stamina and, and the, the willingness and the power to power one through in a day, you know, I, I'll, I'll go through that easy. And so uh, God willing, and, and I have the, the, the determination and motivation the everything to uh in a, in a year from now my my life will be a definitely a step a step above than than what it is now and than what it was a year from now because my life has just been growing you know and, and i'm going with this 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 flow and, and i'm not stopping like i'm not turning back to where i was before well we're gonna help you for sure anything we can do <laughs> So thank you so much, Ricardo. This is fantastic. I, I am so excited for everyone to see your booth and to visit Jessica's booth as well. So anyone who's watching, definitely check out both of their booths in room two. And thank you so much. And again, congratulations, well-deserved. And we're so excited to be helping you get to the next place in your career. So, yeah, thank you. I, I greatly appreciate everything you guys have done. Thank you. That is it. This is a very brief overview. So if you have any questions or you need a reminder of what's happening each day, be sure to sign up for our newsletter. We'll be sending out updates and follow us on social media. We're going to be posting every day's highlights as well as recaps of what you've missed. And if you aren't subscribed to our YouTube channel, please check it out. That's where a lot of our programming will be. As I said, my name is Nicole Garten. Feel free to email me if you have any questions about the fair or you need any help making a purchase. Uh, my email is just Nicole at theotherartfair.com. So we really hope you enjoy. Please take some time to get to know the artist and I hope you find something that you love. Thanks so much, everyone. Bye-bye.